So this plant looks like it should be a watercress or landcress. It's got the perfect leaf shape for cress, but it uh, doesn't taste very pleasant. I've watched it grow up into flower, and it's got a it's, cru it's part of the crucifer family. It's got those four petals and opposites, but it doesn't have any of the mustardy, peppery. It's quite an unpleasant flavour, actually. So not sure what it is. It's probably part of the crucifer family, the same as the cabbages and the watercresses. Looks just like bittercress or watercress, but um, doesn't taste good. So looks can be deceiving. Probably okay to eat or boil up or something, but uh, nah, it just doesn't have that nice mustardy peppery flavour. So not sure what that is, but I give it a miss. So oh, here's this beautiful little stream, clean water, stony bottomed, lovely watercress. I was reading up about watercress and although it's one of the most nutritious green thingies you can eat, it's um, the one issue is if you eat it below, from below the waterline. So down here little critters can uh, attach to the stem underwater, little nematodes. And uh, if you pick it deep like that, you might get some of them and if you eat it fresh reportedly they can survive your gut acid so it's best to go for the ones that are up out of the water or just take the top where the stems dry so the little nematodes won't be growing there so that's fairly safe to eat so among all this poison hemlock there's this little uh, colorful flower in the middle of winter so if you've seen the uh, that brilliant movie with Brad Pitt called Snatch and he wants to buy a caravan in Periwinkle Blue, <laughs> that's, that's Periwinkle Blue. I don't think it's edible, I haven't tried it. Looked it up so it m mustn't have been edible or I would have tried it. So apart from the deadly hemlock, the periwinkle blue, heaps of chickweed, and over here is some proper mustard. It's a bit scruffy, but uh, so this is definitely part of the mustard family, and uh, these this will be peppery and mustardy. Yeah, that's the real thing. Pity about that one by the stream, but. Looks brilliant, but it just doesn't have the, the mustardy flavour. So that one's a bit scruffy, but there's I always love finding the wild mustard. Great sort of trail side nibble. So here's a load of chickweed. So that's where it's got that little white flower I mentioned the last time. <clears throat> So very pleasant to eat, great trailside snack. So that little white flower helps you identify. Little multi-petal, tiny white flower. So in here amongst the, the chickweed and the poison hemlock is some purple dead nettle so it's got a square stem so it's part of the mint family little purple flowers it's got a mm, unusual flavor or smell i have eaten these in a salad but they're i think they're more medicinal herbal than they are nutritional yeah Not too bad. I've tasted them before and they were a little bit sort of chemical, industrial, a bit like yarrow. Not particularly pleasant. 
That one's not too bad actually. Middle of winter. Purple dead nettle. Way better off with the stingy nettles. They are wonderful. As long as you don't get stung. They are full of nutrients. Purple dead nettle. Grows everywhere. This is something I haven't seen before. It's a huge cluster of shaggy ink caps. Beauties. A little bit old on it now. Usually I find them just individually or two or three. They're big too. The size of that. They're often a bit narrower and very white. So these ones are few days old or less. You can see those ones starting to deliquesce, starting to melt. So the lovely white gills start turning black and turn into ink. Usually within about a day. Delicious to eat. I'd like them. They remind me of squid, sort of seafoody. That's brilliant. There's more over here. So here's a heap more of them. Lovely white gills, hollow stem. The gills are just starting to get a bit darker towards the back the bottom tip. That'll be uh, excellent to eat. Shaggy ink caps. An amazing cluster of them. So I'm just going to cook up a feast of these shaggy ink caps from that huge display of them. I've never seen so many of them all at once. And so I'm just going to fry them up with a bit of onion, garlic, salt and pepper, some coconut oil and butter. And just give them a good, good solid fry up. And uh, that'll be a feast. I've always loved these things, but they're hard to find. They just pop up occasionally. But just in the last couple of days, this new spot is just loaded with them. So that's the finished product. Some sautéed shaggy ink caps. Onion and garlic. They do shrink quite a bit. They're quite brittle when you're cleaning them and stuff. They break break apart quite easily like in caps. So they shrink and they give out a lot of juice as well, a lot of water. Eventually they just turn to an ink so they're they're pretty wet. Mushroom. Needs a wee bit more salt. It's got a, a lovely sort of crunchy texture, getting on towards a shaggy parasol texture wise. Lovely mild seafoody flavour. A little more salt and pepper on that. A delightful little mushroom.
Mmm. Yeah, a wee bit of extra salt and pepper work. Lovely texture, lovely flavour. Mild, juicy, moist. Uh, it was a treat to find find so many. I've never seen a growth like that before. So, a wonderful wild food. Shaggy and Kips. So here's to Shaggy and Kips and Mother Nature's Wild Provender.